The University of Environment and Sustainable Development was established as Ghana's contribution towards the enhancement of the environment and then also the achievement of the sustainable goals. It is meant to produce graduates or produce people that will be inclined towards helping the nation and as it were the world to deal with issues of the sustainable development goals. And so to go back, back, back was a committee chaired by Dr. Christine Nyama, um, who chaired the committee set by the president, the then president, President John Dramani Mahama, uh, for them to develop what the university should look like and to be situated also in Somenia. And so eventually in 2015, the act establishing the university, the University of Environment and Sustainable Development Act 2015, Act 898, was passed by parliament to set up a university which is supposed to provide higher education in environment, sustainable development, agriculture, agro-business, and the applied sciences. In the Act, the Section 3 of the Act um, provides that the headquarters of the university will be sited in Somenia, uh, the campus in Donkokrum, and other places as the council may determine. And so the campus in Somenia was put up um, through an EPC, a government agreement with the Italian government, where contractor, as a contractor called contractor, uh, came to site to put up the buildings that uh, we have. The interim council of the university was sworn in in May 2020. And then the three of us, the vice chancellor, the registrar, and the director of finance were appointed on the 1st June 2020. We began our operations in the GTEC building in Accra. And so we operated, GTEC was then NCT. So we had a one room office where we operated from. That's, that's the office for the three of us, but specifically the two of us where we did a lot of work from there. Um, GTEC was so generous to us to release some of their national service persons to us and two of their staff to also assist us. So they were with us all through and through. Uh, when we had to recruit people, the council had to meet, the interim council had to meet to agree on who and who to recruit and what are the qualities to look at. For example, for the lecturers, we agreed that we would take people who have at least two years experience teaching in the university, as well as all the administrative staff that should have at least two years working experience in the university. The reason was that as a young university, when you have this experience, and they will be able to assist you to do the work well. So that was how it went. Um, we came to the campus before we moved, finally, we had come to campus because we used to come to so many post office to pack our letters. You know, I remember usually Daniel drives and myself and registrar will be there. So when we go, we pack, we pack the letters. So there are pictures of me carrying letters, packing the letters in the, in the boxes and all that. So we, we got that done. But I remember the first time we were brought here, because we needed to come and see here. Um, when, when we came, I, I asked myself if I had made the right choice, or if I had made the right decision to accept to be vice chancellor. Uh, it was critical. It's something I don't share, but uh, I looked at the place place was weedy, there's nobody here. And you see, you are looking at where you are coming from. 
you are coming from a university uh, created 60 years ago, and now you have to come here, set up a university, just the three of you. Who are you going to recruit? How are you going to recruit? How are the people you are going to recruit going to work to meet the goals that you have? So these were things that were running through my mind. So I turned and looked back at my two other colleagues, and uh, uh, I didn't see them in a right frame of mind. So I had to inspire them with some word that, oh, this is the place. And so this place must work. So actually, if you hear me say USD will succeed, that is the day that, that, that it started. And so um, we came here, saw everything. Then the university itself was commissioned officially on the 5th of August 2020 by the President of the Republic. And then after that, it was handed over to us to, to, to run the university. We got here to campus in September, I think on the 29th of September 2020, and we were to begin the um, interviews. We had advertised and we had over 22,000 applications from which we were recruiting 300 people. And so it was an interesting sight when you have three people who are supposed to interview all these things. But council intervened and so we brought on retired professors, retired university administrators, especially people from the Ghana Arts and Sciences Academy who came in to help us. And so we had committees, interview panels for lecturers, for senior lecturers, for professors, and all that. And by the grace of God, we were, we were able to do that. One of the significant things is that we had our helpers who could stay till 4 a.m. You know, so sometimes you have the registrar, you have Rose, you have Daniel, you have this NCTE interns. After interviews, they stay till 4 a.m. before they leave to their home. They were staying in the hostel. They were staying in the hostel. So they will leave and report back to the office at 8 a.m. the next day to work. Um, eventually, we also had Philip, who offered to weed here because this place was very, very weedy. You know, this place was very, very weedy. So Philip offered to weed this place alone. He was just weeding. We asked him to bring other people. We got some cleaners. That's where we got Janet, we got Mabel, and so on. These people worked very hard to, to get us to get to where we were going. So eventually we were able to we were able to finish the number of people we wanted to recruit. Uh, we recruited the 300 in our first phase. Uh, but later we had uh, less than them coming. I think four or five of them declined to come. I remember uh, whilst we put in advertisement for the staff, uh, we also put in advertisement for the students because the university was supposed to have begun with students, we wanted to do that in the 2020. But you know, it was coming in the heat of the COVID. And so the universities have agreed to begin in January. And so we also decided to begin in January. So we put in advertisement to bring in the students. We thought that as a uni university is going to generate all the excitement to get people. Unfortunately, we, we had, I won't say unfortunately, but we had about 140 applications. And out of the 140 applications, 78 were deemed qualified. So we recruited our first batch of 78 students who reported in January 2021. So in January, we decided to have the 2021, we decided to have the matriculation. But one of the significant things I wanted done is to have a ceremony that heralded the beginning of an academic year. 
So I discussed with the chairman of council and he asked me what I want to do. Uh, I said that I want to do commencement lecture. The commencement lecture in the United States is done when students are graduating. So call it congregation when they are graduating. They bring in a commencement lecture. So you can understand that to mean that as you are going out, here in Ghana, we we'll call it the commendation service. But for me, my understanding of a commencement lecture is what do you use to herald the academic year? What do you use to indicate that the academic year is beginning? And so that is the commencement lecture. How do we select the topics for the lecture? We select topics that are related to the mandate of the university. So if you like, in environment, in sustainable development. And then we bring experts in the field. In our first commencement lecture, we had um, one professor who was very instrumental in our recruitment, uh, Professor Albert from Legon. And he spoke on giving us the mandate that we are supposed to train people to take charge of the environment. So he spoke on the mandate of the university. The two we have had, one has been on water, and then the other one has been on waste management or something. So as a university, that is what we are doing. So that it will get our students to understand and staff to also understand that we are beginning an academic year, and that academic year has something for us to move with. If I may use 2023, our focus is on water, which means then that everything we will do as a university will be centered on safe water. And if we see all the Ferrari surrounding the water, our water bodies in the country, and even the water bodies in the world, what it does tell us now is that there is the need for us to take action on that. And as a university with expertise in this area, that is the way to go. And so in the commencement lecture, we bring the media, we bring experts, and we bring people who are in key positions in government, in ordinary life and all that, for them to listen to the lectures and then take notes from that. The vision of the university is to be a center of excellence for the gathering and dissemination of information related to environment and sustainable development for public goal. Of course, this is um, where our mandate is. And so as a university, this is where we are going. Our mission is to produce young people that are equipped with knowledge in environment and sustainable development. So we really, as an institution, want to operate within the scope of our mandate. The core values, I remember the chairman of council asked me, what kind of person do I want the university to train? And so I put it this way, what kind of person should come out of our university? Who can we train? Uh, who can be considered as a person who has gone the UESD training? And so we looked at honesty, opportunities, perseverance, and then enterprising. One of the things I also did was to give something that will be enabling to people that came here for both staff and for students. So if you take hope, you want to give hope to the next generation, you want to give hope to the individual person, you want to give hope to the society, you want to give hope to the student, you want to give hope to the staff. So you can't just say it is just hope. So what do you derive of these letters, H-O-P-E? And um, considerably, we had honesty, opportunities, perseverance, enterprising.
from the HOPE. And that is what brought us to that. In my thinking, is to produce young people who are honest. And that is what the H stands for, to produce people that are honest, to have a staff that is honest, both teaching and non-teaching, that is honest, that we do all our work in honesty, um, not just to have it, but to show it. And so that if you have to come to work at 8 o'clock, you come to work at 8 o'clock. That is part of the honesty. As a teacher, if you have to teach for three hours, you teach for three hours. You don't come 30 minutes late and teach for one and a half hours and then go back. And so I wanted us to produce young people that are honest and have a staff that is honest. In opportunities, we are looking at the fact that opportunities abound in the world. As an institution, first, to look at opportunities. What are the opportunities? To make this university an equal opportunity institution. That you don't say because you are this, because you are that. But it's about if you qualify, then you can be there. And so the first thing in opportunities is to provide an institution of equal opportunities. Then how do they create opportunities? So there's a need to create awareness for the existence of opportunities. So create opportunities, take advantage of opportunities, make use of opportunities. There are a lot of opportunities that are bound, but oftentimes you have people who sit by, especially young people who sit by saying they can't get this, there is no this, there is no that. But I am envisaging a situation where they are training will equip them to be able to create the opportunities, take advantage of existing opportunities, and then make use of these opportunities. In perseverance, um, as I said, when, when, when we got here, I, I had my own experience. And it's the same with a lot of people. You have people who come who have sat in bigger offices, spacious offices, and all kinds of offices. Now you say, this is one room for your whole office. Share it with people, you know. So then you need to persevere. Perseverance comes in to say that, well, this is what I have now. Let me make use of it and then push forward. But in the larger sphere, perseverance is doing what you have to do in the face of failure. And so you remember in the... In the uh, KG's earlier uh, rhyme recitals, it's a lesson you should me try again. And that is what is my guiding principle. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, try again. Then your courage will appear, try again. You know? And so it doesn't mean that when you stop at, when you get stuck at one point, that is where you are going to, to stop. It means that come back and try again. We, we always have a chance. There's always a second chance. So the issue is about how do you take advantage of the second chance? And as many chances as possible as you take, it takes perseverance. And you realize that as you persevere, you get new experiences in every try. You get a new experience. Every try gets a new experience. So eventually, you get there, and then you experience. So the perseverance came in that for staff, we should build the idea of perseverance to let them know that, well, this is where we are. We are beginning, but we will move forward and get somewhere. Uh, one of the things that uh, excites me is the fact that we are not beginning as some universities began. Some universities began in old buildings. Some universities began in uh, training school buildings, but we are beginning in buildings that were designed and built for an institution as a university. And so if we persevere, we will get to where we want to get. And then the enterprising. The enterprising is to say that if you take advantage of these opportunities, you should be able to earn a living from those opportunities. 
your community should be able to benefit from the opportunities that are at your disposal. So what do you do that is not there that will bring you benefit as a person and will bring benefit to a bigger society? And I'm sure that as young people get into the mindset of uh, entrepreneurship, it will also bring them their daily bread for which they will become uh, sustainable individuals. And it is coming also from my, from my work as a, as a PhD student, as a career counselor, where my PhD centered on entrepreneurial careers for young people. And um, listening to them from the data, you realize that there are people who already have knowledge in entrepreneurship but it's about what they need to enter is what they lack. For instance, do they have the uh, mental readiness? Do they have the psychological risk taking and all that? So that if we assist these young people with these things, it will get there. So that is where the HOPE came in. And with respect to the HOPE conference, HOPE Roadshow, it is an intentional or a deliberate aspect to inculcate the core values in both the staff and the students, such that it will not just be something that is posted on the walls of the university. But if you ask the uh, staff, if you ask any staff, so what do these mean, the HOP, what do they mean? The staff should be able to tell you about it. And then that as an institution, our culture or our life will be dictated or will be measured against this HOP. And I'll tell you, I was excited when, when I read that one of our staff uh, had her purse missing. And um, upon various announcements, she later came to say she found it and everything was there intact. And somebody commented, one of the, oh, then, the hope is working, the age is working, you know. So I, I can't be excited more than hearing that. It means that if we continue to live that, we can make a difference. So if you see our theme for our whole roadshow and conference, we say leading the UESD way so that as a university, there should be something peculiar about somebody who works in UASD. There should be something peculiar about somebody who is a graduate from UASD that they can say, this is an honest guy. He's doing this, he's doing that. He doesn't give up easily. He moves on. And for everything that he does, he wants to look at what is in it to benefit the society. I would like to say that the university in the three years has had a good relationship with the stakeholders in the communities. Talk about the chiefs. The chiefs have been attending our programs. At our invitations, they come, they sit through our programs. And uh, I, I feel very fulfilled to see them attend to our, our programs and to uh, respond to our invitations. With the stakeholder group, the churches, the farmer groups, the CSOs, the NGOs, and all that. We have a good relationship, I would say, and I'm very much excited at that, at that relationship because whatever we do, when we invite them, they come. Sometimes we, we tap their expertise. At other times, they tap our expertise. Um, our investor relations office just... Uh, uh, signed an MOU with a private local uh, radio station in town which wants to use some of expertise of the university and the university will also be contributing to the agri climate change programs and all that. We have invited secondary school students for training here in the university. We, we have collaborated with other uh, partners outside Somenia to organize workshops or seminars on uh, climate change, 
soil development and all that for them. There are, there are some of them we have been to the churches to talk about the university at their invitation, to talk about the university, to talk about their programs, sorry, to talk about our programs. Some of them even um, carry announcements on our programs in their churches for many months at no fees. And so I think that I will say that I am happy and the university is fortunate to have a stakeholdership that is very engaging. And I pray that it will continue to go on and on and on. On assumption of office, one of the things we decided to do was to look for who our partners are. Who are the people who are, if you like, in the enterprise in which we find ourselves as a university. And so we identified, so we began some visits to some media houses, the first being the GBC. I will never forget that one from GBC. Yes, GBC was so receptive to us. From GBC, we went to Daily Graphic. From Daily Graphic, we went to Ghanaian Times. From Ghanaian Times, we went to City FM. Uh, City FM uh, we went to Yahudan yeah, Graphic. Yeah. So, so there, 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 there are a few of them. There are a few of them who thought that we were coming to ask for things. I remember uh, somebody called me and said, Prof, I hear you want to visit our institution. I say yes. So my general manager says, I should ask you what you are coming to do. I say, oh, we are, we are coming to introduce the university to you to tell you what we do, and then to look at areas where we can collaborate. And this is a radio station I have sat on about four or five times to talk about critical national issues. So I say, uh, my GM said uh, we should find out from you because sometimes when some of them come, they come asking for things. I will tell you, I was not happy, so I refused to follow up. I refused to follow up to go and visit that, that, that uh, media house. Um, we also looked at the ministries, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Energy, uh, Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, uh, Environmental Protection Agency, ESA. There, 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 there are a couple of them in the three years we, we have visited, GNPC, because these are people we see that we are in the same working environment with. I was excited that we struggled to meet Petroleum Commission. For the first time, we struggled to meet Petroleum Commission. But when we met them, we were here when they invited us to come the second time. They invited us themselves because they saw that what we aim to do is very critical to their, to their existence. And so I was happy they called us back themselves. And so I will say that the university has enjoyed, um, as many as we have approached, reception from these organizations, governmental, non-governmental, uh, civil, servi civil service organizations, civil society organizations, and all that. And so for partnerships, I think it's been key. Um, if you talk about our partners in the area we find ourselves, for example, Zoom Lion, um, the Forestry Commission, the IUFRO, which is the international body that regulates forest um, operations and all that. And so it's, I think it's, it's a good for us. For our three years in existence, if we consider the number of MOUs we have locally with some institutions, educational institutions, and then outside the country with some educational institutions, such that our virtual seminars, our virtual international seminars, are even, um, we even have lecturers who are outside the country that present to us. And I think that it is key for us as a young university to be doing that.
So my visit to this uh, senior high school, the university couldn't stay as a university indoors. And so my vision was to take the university to its prospective suitors, if you like. Uh, that is the senior high school. So we took the opportunity with the team to visit the secondary schools in Yellow Krobo and then in Manya Krobo. Um, we tried to visit both public and private, both um, the grammar and then the uh, uh, technical. So for each of them, I went with a team of lecturers, persons from our community engagement and from the university relations office where we presented the university to them, who we are, what we do, what we believe in, the programs that we have. And the significant thing that I learned from one of the schools was that for each program, we told them the job opportunities. And these were things they had not heard before. And so for each program, we told them that if you read BSc, Environment and Public Health, these are the job opportunities. And they were very happy. And for me, as a career expert, I was also very, very happy. From there, we went to the, what we call the Kwapim Ridge, where we visited schools in the Kwapim North, the Kwapim South, Okre, and all those areas. Meanwhile, staff from the university have been going around the secondary schools around the country and also participating in education first to bring the university to these uh, senior high school students who, as I said, were our, our potential suitors. And so we are trying as much as possible to bring the university to the relevant people in so many or in the communities around so many. The university is already there with our community-based experiential learning, which we refer to as COBEL, where the students go to stay in these communities for five weeks, where they profile the communities. They live with them, eat with them, do whatever they will do with them, you know. So, so it's, it's good. There is a college of education here in Somenia called Mount Mary. We have visited them, had interaction with them, because it's also a tertiary institution. And if you like, they are the people in our space. And so we also coordinated with them and there are things that they, we propose to do together. And so in as much as our community is concerned, we have covered a lot. We also, this year, 2023, we are covering 50 junior high schools in the eastern, in parts of Greater Accra, and then in parts of Volta region, in our community development challenge, which this year, our focus is on plastic waste. And so we are doing a lot with respect to community relations. Um, you can count the number of times the university has been invited to programs at Akwemufie, to programs at uh, Manya, to programs at Yilo, and to some programs in other communities like Asesewa, Aseseso, and all that. So, Based on our mandate, we, I want us to be a community-friendly institution, where I always talk about taking the gown to town. I think that as a university, we are on the way to our objectives. The first thing is to look at what mandate we find ourselves in. And the question to answer is if we are pursuing our mandate. And if we are pursuing our mandate, I will say we are on course. In our three years, we are running 19 academic programs that have received administrative approval from the Ghana Tertiary Education Commission. And now we are going through the proper accreditation. And I'm happy, very, very happy to say that the programs that have been um, that have gone through the process have given me, we've had good remarks for these programs, even including some new ones that we are developing. 
And so by the fourth year, by our fourth year, I believe all our programs will be accredited and we should be one of the go-to universities for our young generations now. Um, the other thing that excites me, and that one I really will commend my university relations office and the IT office, is the visibility of the university. Where out of 88 tertiary institutions, our university was ranked 20 in Ghana. And that, that, that one excites me, that if in three years we have been able to do this, um, we need to encourage our staff um, to move forward for us to, to do that. In terms of research, that is where I think that um, we should improve. We are just three years, but uh, what the academic staff are doing in terms of research, because we have been the first in finding out other things, other things, first in finding out some flies that attack citrus, first in finding out, um, there are other things that the university researchers here have been first in finding out, you know, and so that gives us the excitement of the fact that moving forward there are a lot we can do. We have a science laboratory. I have personally asked three experts to come and see, and each time they have said, Eric, you are sitting on gold, and that excites me. You know, but the challenge here is having the completed, the complete um, items to finish fixing them. Because in the lab here, we're able to do soil analysis, doing mercury, water analysis, leaf analysis, doing a lot of things within our mandate. And um, speaking with one of the big waste companies in Ghana, they even want to come and collaborate with us. So we are waiting for them to come and inspect the lab, assess the lab, and then see how they are going to work with us. And if it comes to pass, uh, I know it's going to be a very big thing. And so um, I think as a university, we'll take it one step at a time. And that's my personal philosophy, and that's what I, I want to bring, not to stamp here, but that's what I, 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 I want to bring. You, I believe that you don't rush to take the stage, but you take steps. It's the steps that can take you to the stage. And so as we take it one step at a time, we will get to the stage. I think that as a, as a young university, um, we are moving gradually. In the 2022, the Webometrics ranking of tertiary institutions of Ghana uh, ranked us 20th in terms of impact. And therefore, I think that we are not doing badly at all. If um, what I saw, 88 institutions, and uh, we three years we ranked, uh, we ranked 20. At least I know two universities that have spent more than 10 years that came after us. And it means that as a university, we are doing well. As an Infant institution, I will say that uh, it is beset with a number of challenges, but it's also about how you manage the challenges that gets you to get to where you get to. If we compare when we, we came here in 2020 to where we are now, we see a vast difference. Um, at least now, a few people have working tools, even though it's not enough, uh, like computers, enough computers, enough tables, enough chairs, and all that. We don't have all of them. You have been looking at uh, the vehicles that we have as an institution. You know, if you have one pickup that does everything. In football, we have called it a utility player. And so we have a utility pickup that does all the work. And so these are challenges, but in the face of it, how do we get it to work? So you look at alternatives. 
you look at alternatives and then also you do what you are supposed to do, do the first things first, so that the other things will follow as and when. You do what will not get the university to grind to a halt first, and then the other things also will follow. So um, people talk about challenging or problems, yeah. One of the things I meet people say, oh, so what are the problems of your institution? And I tell them that it's exciting. Uh, running an institution as this is exciting. I'm in, exciting, in, a, in an exciting time. And they will, be, they will be laughing, especially the media, people from the media, when they want you to talk about the problem and you tell them that uh, I'm in an exciting time, they say, no, I don't want to say what problems. I said, no, it's about how you seize these things that make you get what you want. We don't have enough money. The student numbers which will bring the money are now appreciating. So what do you do? You do the little that you can do. And then also transparency. I believe in transparency. Let the people know how much is there. Let them know how much you make so that when you are speaking, they will understand you. And they also let them know how much you spend, because this is a public institution. So you can't cover, say, oh, we are spending this, so nobody has to see. That's not what I believe in. I believe in transparency, so that you, you as a leader will get your people to agree to go with you. When there isn't anything, they will go with you. When there is something, you let them know, and then they will go with you. And so, as for the challenges, they are bound. You are looking at um, offices for staff. Over here, we don't have personal offices for lectures. So the lecture rooms, we have turned as offices for them. I jokingly refer, refer to them as a lecture common room. So I go there, and I go there often. Uh, we know we have even converted some of these lecture halls into office spaces. Where I hear they call it ministries. And there are people there. But you see, what it means is that we are all working through the history. It is not me as the chief executive alone. Everybody, everybody, the students, everybody is working through the history. That at a certain point, then we will turn back and say that this university has made the strides. As an institution, one of the things we've also sought to is to create knowledge and make that knowledge available to the wider public. By so doing, we have moved from one conference in 2021 to three conferences in 2023 this year. And this year, July, August, September, we are going to have a, a conference in each of the months, which is going to be very significant for us, to the extent that we are collaborating in one of the conferences with an institution outside the university, an international institution that thinks that we are in the same mandate. They are into sustainable education and research development. And so they see us as possible uh, collaborators. And so we are going to work with, with, with them for this year. And that is one of the, of the conferences we will have. The two are the UESD specific conferences that we create to invite international papers, international speakers. We, we disseminate it on all our social media handles. And then we share the knowledge that have been created by staff here and from other institutions with the outside world. Yeah. By the time ESD clocks 10, I'll be an old man. I'll be on retirement smoking my pipe. That's what I would like to do when I retire. Uh, I want to see it as an institution which has built the second campus on, Sob on uh, Don Cochrane with the Agric, as for the Agric, the School of Agric, my eyes are going to follow that because in, in my mind's eye, it's supposed to be a big one 
with factories that can, um, what do you call it, add value to what we have? Is it possible for us to even produce cornered beef from the animal farm? Is it possible for us to process um, the cassava, the yam, and all that will grow? If you have 60 acres of land, it's going to take sometimes about 10 years to fill all that. What do we use the parts for? And how do we use that? So I want to see USD as a, in 10 years as a bigger university um, that would have created and recreated itself. You know, created and recreated itself, meaning that the staff and the students that go through the university will be able to recreate people who are like them. For example, you have a student who finishes a first degree, does the second degree, finds himself at a place of work. He should be able to exude the HOP to the people he works with, for the people to say that this is worth emulating, and so we will emulate them. So as a university, we will create the people that will also recreate themselves.